my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astral Photography Tutorials. Going to talk about this uh, Celestron Power Seeker 80EQ. Uh, this telescope, it, it comes with a little motorized motor so it can track the night sky. It's, it's not going to be good enough to do deep sky imaging, but for planetary imaging and for uh, visual use, I'm sure it'll be just fine. I picked up this uh, telescope as a uh, gift for my, uh, my nephew. He was interested in the planet, so I thought this would be a, a great gift. Uh, the price on it's not too expensive. Uh, I got it on sale. It was like 130 bucks, so it's a it's a fairly uh, reasonably priced item. So let's get into it and we'll review this next. I set it up here during the day just to get a good idea of what this uh, telescope is all about. Um, did some pre-initializing on the the focusing, trying to figure out where the focus was. Uh, one of the things that when you use a telescope is the finder scope. The finder scope is really an important part of your, your setup so you can point it at the, a part of the sky and find your target. Uh, unfortunately, I found this finder scope to be absolutely junk. I mean, this thing is really bad. I don't think I've seen a, a worse finder scope on any uh, telescope that I've seen. It's very hard to adjust uh, and it moves all around. So uh, probably the, what you'd want to do is just this finder scope has these little screws right here you can pull up. The telescope has a little shoe right here. And this shoe, I wish they would have included a set screw so you could put in a, a finder scope. I had a another finder scope uh, lying around. And uh, what I did is I, I tried it. I just put that in there to make sure that, you know, I was uh, still capable of, you know, lining my, a finder scope. And, you know, I put this other one in here. I had it aligned, and then after that, I could, uh, you know, find a target very easily. Cons considered using this, I would probably get rid of that and definitely do an upgrade to the, uh, the finder scope. Uh, you know, what I wish they would have done is, you know, they they, they sent along with it. Uh, you get the, the the 20 millimeter eyepiece, and, and in fact, this is probably the only eyepiece you'll be able to use on the scope. Uh, they sent this uh, four millimeter. Uh, eyepiece and uh, the eye relief on both these eyepieces are, is very narrow. If, if you have glasses, uh, you probably won't be able to use these eyepieces anyway. Uh, then they also uh, sent along a, uh, a 3x uh, Barlow with it, and these are just too high of magnification for this particular telescope. But this telescope right now is already at uh, pretty close to f12. Uh, and what they should have done is uh, not include this, these junky other eyepiece uh, accessories and just kind of concentrate more on upgrading this uh, uh, finder scope. Uh, then I think that probably would have uh, increased the value of this particular uh, telescope. And, and, and you know, this is an entry level telescope. It's, you know, you, what do you get for 130, 30 bucks is, is, is not much. But uh, they do, it does have these little uh, quick release on here where you can loosen it and then you know move the the scope and then it's got the, the fine tuning where you can do the slow mode with uh, the knobs there uh, overall I, I guess if i had to rate this uh telescope on a one to five scale it'd be pushing a, a high two two maybe three at tops uh, i i'd really kind of wish that some of these pieces like this finder scope uh, was upgraded and uh, this other additional really just uh, junk that's really no good uh, you know really wasn't included but the, the scope and the optics when you get the scope on there and you have a decent eyepiece and you look through it, it it's not bad and I, I think it's okay for uh, maybe a starter for uh, you know imaging in a planetary or just getting some casual uh, visual use out of it. Backyard at night and I tried uh, some favorite targets like M42 and the Pleiades and uh, both those targets you could see the magnification is really very high using the 20 millimeter eyepiece um, the tripod's a little shaky and it's a little kind of hard to use those slow-mo knobs uh, I, I think if you're going to use this uh, you probably need an eyepiece that's about a, a 30 millimeter or 40 millimeter uh, because it's really got a lot of magnification and keeping uh, with that high magnification and the kind of hard control mount to use I didn't use it for any uh, imaging but I can bet that uh, 
probably when you get down to it, there's going to be a little bit of a challenge because once you get that uh, uh, video camera on there, do some planetary imaging, you're going to have such a very narrow view. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it you probably could use it for that. But I think the best or the strongest point of this telescope is using it as a terrestrial viewing during the day. The night, it, it, it does work. Uh, it's just that everything's a little shaky and too high powered, uh, I, I think, for the equipment that's on there. You know, the combination of the poor mount and the very high magnification of this particular telescope. Okay, so you know what to do. If you want to see more videos like this or uh, more astrophotography tips and tricks, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.